Hey guys, um, this is a new series for me. I'm kind of new to YouTube. I've done a few videos in the past that were terrible, and this one's probably also going to be pretty terrible, but on the bright side, it's all uphill from here, hopefully. Um, what I'm going to try to do uh, here is go through how to do data science for really cheap on Linux. And Linux is a kind of a key part of that because it's free and really, really powerful right out of the box. Um, to, to address the cheap part, uh, I'm going to be using a VirtualBox VM, uh, which really has no specs at all. It's it's got uh, oh system, uh, two gigs of memory, and one processor, and an 80 gig hard disk. So this is what you could you could get a system like this on eBay for I'm guessing like 50 bucks uh, if you wanted a, a dedicated piece of hardware, um, or you could just run a VM on on pretty much anything now if you're if it's like your daily computer. <clears throat> and it wouldn't be a big deal. So uh, this is an example of processing data that's pretty big. I mean, we're going to be working with all of Wikipedia, um, but not on, on any fancy hardware or using any fancy OS. Um, I guess Linux is kind of fancy. I'll get into that later. So a uh, quick recap of how I've gotten here. I'm already torrenting Wikipedia down, and in order to do that, I needed to download a torrent client for Linux. Um, if you minimize this, this is basically the desktop you get when you install Ubuntu 18.04, which is what we're on. You can install almost any version of Ubuntu, but 18.04 is the current long-term service distribution. Um, I prefer long-term service. If I would recommend that you start there. You don't have to, but, but it's, it'll make your life a little bit easier. I'll talk about the, the subtle de details about Ubuntu versioning later on. Um, so I, I ran Ubuntu Linux, uh, booted it up, opened up Firefox, and then Googled Wikipedia database download to my history here. You can see that here. And they have a whole page about ways you can download Wikipedia. It's pretty awesome. They, they're all set up for it. Um, I went this route. This, this is, uh, yeah, this here is the torrent. And um, they have the magnet link. Now, when I first opened this, it, the browser complained. See, now it, now it knows what to do. But when I first opened this, the browser didn't like it because I didn't have a BitTorrent, a BitTorrent client installed. So um, if you're on a fresh Ubuntu install, you'll need to actually uh, add that. So I hit Alt F2, GNOME Terminal. I'll explain why it's called GNOME Terminal later. But for now, just memorize GNOME Terminal. It's a thing you'll run all the time. Uh, most, pretty much everything meaningful in Linux happens on the terminal. Um, and it's really worth getting used to this environment. I'll also go into a lot more detail about what's going on in the terminal and why we're running certain commands. But for now, uh, here are exactly the commands I ran. sudo apt-get update. Um, this just updates the package listing. Uh, you don't need to run this much, like once a day is fine. And then um, sudo apt-get install transmission gtk. And that is the name of the BitTorrent client we're using. Uh, once you have that installed, you can exit out of your terminal, run transmission GTK, which is already running for us. <clears throat> and then when you have the magnet link, you can just open URL, paste the magnet link in here, and then hit open, and it'll start the download. So uh, once that's, it'll like confirm with you where you want to store it, but that's about it. Um, and then you'll you'll have this giant file downloading uh, about 16 gigs worth. So while this is while this is finishing up, let's talk a little bit about what kind of data this is. Um, we have a couple of clues based on the file name. It ends in .bz2, and if you use Linux for very much time or or like Unix style OSs in general, you'll start to learn various file extensions like this. Bz2 is a stream compression format, so bytes in and bytes out. It's not like zip. Uh, zip is an archive where you, you store multiple files. A stream compressor just stores one data stream, one file at a time. Um, and in this case, it's a giant XML file. So the way to read this is we have this nwiki.xml, that's just text, and that was fed through the bzip2 compressor to result in this much smaller file. Now, that's interesting for us because what it means is that this 16 gigabyte file is going to decompress into something much larger. In fact, I'm guessing it's going to decompress into something bigger than the 80 gig disk we are operating on. This is where things start to get interesting. We actually don't ever have to decompress the entire thing to read the entire thing. 
And this is one of the biggest reasons I think starting data science on Linux is a good thing because you learn how easy it is to do things like that where you don't, you don't, you don't decompress your temporary outputs onto disk or, or anything of the sort. All right, and that is done. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a terminal so we can take a look at this file. All right, this is in our downloads folder. So let's talk about just navigating the directory structure in a terminal. You also have a file manager, I'll pop that open too, and that way you can see the parallels. So we're in the same directory in each of these cases. The terminal right now, this little tilde means your home directory, and over here, we are in home. So if we do an ls to list contents, you'll see the same stuff. And yeah, desktop documents, downloads, yep, all the same, all the same things. These are all just directories. Ubuntu gives them icons, but they're all fundamentally the same. Um, Wikipedia is in downloads. So cd into downloads is the same as double clicking on downloads over here. Now we're in here, so ls will give us the contents of this directory. It's in a different color because Ubuntu is, actually ls is highlighting it. Um, it detects the compressed file extension and turns it red. It's a common convention that ls will choose colors for different types of files. Um, and here's the file as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of the file manager because everything we care about doing can be done in the terminal. And that's, that's just like the way that you'll see things uh, referred to online. You'll see people doing terminal commands and, and stuff. Um, ls has some options that are useful in this case. So we'll do ls-lh and I'll explain that. Um, ls normally just gives you a list of file names, but maybe you want more data. So dash l gives you a long listing and dash h means print human readable sizes. Without h, you would have this. And that's a lot of digits. It's not totally easy to parse. Like that's kilobytes there and megabytes there and gigabytes, but you have to kind of manually do it. This just says 16G and gives you a rough estimate of, of how big this data is. Okay, none of that though tells us what's actually in this file. So to do that, we're going to need to partially decompress and then look at it. Now remember, we can't decompress the whole thing. We do have a bzip decompressor decompression tool, bzip2. <clears throat> it's not very helpful. A lot of Linux utilities are give you absolutely minimal help when you run them without options, but dash dash help will show you what you can do with it. Now in this case, we need two options. We want to force decompression and we want to print to standard out, which is basically just the terminal. bzip2 dash dc and wiki. Now before I run this, I'm going to tell you <clears throat> we're not done yet and I'll show you why. That's Wikipedia, just being streamed out to the terminal. It's not being saved anywhere. The terminal is just kind of showing us the most recent stuff and then losing it because the it only has so many lines of scroll back. All right, I'm gonna hit Control C to interrupt that. We need a way to slow it down, basically, and, and to see what we're looking at without loading the whole thing. And a great uh, way to do that is to use what's called a pager. We have a few options. We can use less or, actually the original pager was called more. And as a pun, the, the next one was called less, because less is more. Um, so more is more primitive. It just basically says more. You can't go back, I think. You can just hit spacebar and you get more. Q is quit. I'm going to use less uh, because it's a lot more civilized, I think. OK, so less supports like page down, page up, all that stuff. Um, so what we're looking at here, let me maximize this window. Or not, OK, there we go. <clears throat> what we're looking at here is basically just the output of unbezipping the, the file we downloaded. And so as you can see, we have an XML document, and this is one giant XML document. That's about it. Um, it's a lot. And so when we, when we go to process this, what we're going to do is build up a series of stream processing elements. The less is basically acting like a stream consumer and then putting stuff on the screen. Um, what we're going to do is consume line by line and then uh, pull out the words. Well, we're, we're actually going to design a data pipeline. I'll talk a little bit about what that looks like in a minute. Um, but first, let's just page over this a little bit and see what we're getting ourselves into. So we have um, XML markup. That's these tags here. And then that goes for a while. This is header section, but I don't think it's very relevant. Then we have page. I think basically it's just this header followed by a series of page. Yeah. That's, that's about it, actually. And then each page has a text. So this text block goes to here. And we want the stuff inside the text block. We can break all this into words. 
I think it's fine for us to count like pound redirect as a word or computer accessibility. <clears throat> really what all we care about is just runs of word-like characters. Anything else would be pretty involved to clean. Um, and I might get into that in a different video. Let me know if you're interested. But I think I'll start with this. So we have, um, I don't know if you can hear the kids, they're, they're pretty rambunctious right now. Um, we have a, a number of, of like words in here that are kind of quasi formatting and stuff. Those will be fairly obvious when they sort into the, uh, to the actual list of, of word frequencies. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good starting point. So I'm going to end this video right now and then in the next video we'll pick up right here and we will start figuring out how to extract words from the articles.